So the model fibrosis patient population in the United States is over 20,000 individuals. Uh, that when we find the disease, you know, the vast majority of patients have symptoms. Uh, they can relate around fatigue, that's by far the most common. They can be around spleen-related symptoms, abdominal discomfort, uh, sometimes pain, sometimes fullness, sometimes early satiety. And then they have a range of what we call constitutional symptoms that we have learned are biologically linked with cytokines in the disease. So a constitutional that can be uh, inadvertent weight loss, night sweats, fevers, uh, and things of that nature. So when we really uh, look and ask patients, almost all patients have symptoms. Sometimes the symptoms have come on so gradually, they are, have been unaware of them having come on or they've attributed them to uh, other things. Primary care physicians play a key role in managing our patients with hematologic malignancies and clearly are the ones that usually find them at the time of diagnosis. You know, with, for, on the myelofibrosis end, it may be the uh, observation of splenomegaly on physical exam. Uh, it may be the uh, abnormalities in blood counts that they see either anemia, leukocytosis, immature cells in the peripheral blood. So they typically don't know necessarily yet what the diagnosis is prior to a bone marrow and that evaluation, but they typically do have a sense that there's something going wrong in the heme system because the symptoms and enlargement of the spleen alone has a broader differential. So it can include monofibrosis, but it could include uh, an acute leukemia, it could include a lymphoma, uh, it could include mononucleosis. So there's a broader differential, uh, but primary care physicians clearly play a key role in identifying patients that may have a blood condition and myelofibrosis clearly as one of those that may be found.